I was a little kid when the iPod mini was released back in 2004 and I wanted it. I wanted to put my little music on it, listen to it wherever I go and went, etc etc. So when I asked my parents to get me one, they told me to get f And it made sense. Who's going to give someone, especially a little kid, a $300 music listening device, which they may end up losing. So then over the years I forgot about it, until I ended up seeing some videos online about, you know, people with iPod minis, the originals, and I thought to myself, why don't I get my hands on one? Get my hands on an iPod mini, you know, since I'm a big boy now. So I ended up getting my hands on a cheapo iPod mini for 20 bucks Australian. Uh, it worked perfectly fine, except the battery was uh, kind of dead. Anyway, I wanted to upgrade the, um, the internal space. 4 gigs nothing these days. So I ended up buying a cheapo SD card to compact flash. Apparently the iPod mini's uh, hard drive shares a uh, almost identical interface with a compact flash card. And I ended up getting my hands on a 128 gig SD card as it's its max supported size. Apparently the iPod mini is sensitive to which uh, compact flash card you replace the, the internal hard drive with. It's really finicky. So in the end, the cheaper Chinese uh, SD to compact flash card did not work. So I ended up ordering a iFlash SD to CF adapter from iDemi iGods, which took about a couple of months to get. I think I ordered it in January, ended up getting it in late March. Once I was able to get my hands on the card, I noticed its uh, build quality was pretty sturdy, it was pretty... Uh, it didn't feel cheap. So the first thing I did was get my hands on the um, mainboard, the iPod's mainboard, and throw away the, um, the crappy, cheapo SD card converter. Here's a close-up of the SD card I used, it's a 128GB uh, SanDisk Ultra. And the thing about the SD to CF adapter is that it didn't come with like a SD converter for SD micro cards. So I ended up just finding some old worn out converter and slapping that baby in. But firstly I ended up making sure which way is the right way up for the um, compact flash adapter. Once I got the adapter and the battery plugged in, I wanted to make sure that it worked. That the iPod mini was detecting the SD card and iTunes had no issue with this modification to see if it would format, store and hold a song. It did take a fair bit after the iPod mini was formatted for iTunes to detect the new iPod. I don't know why, but I sat there for like 2-3 minutes. And boom! 118.99 gig. It looked bloody insane. A device that either came in 4 gig or 6 gig is now able to hold at least 118 gigabytes of music. Now I just wanted to see if the iPod mini was able to hold a song just to see if the SD card is stable and the device itself is stable enough to hold the song and let iTunes to play the song off the iPod mini. Because at this stage the keyboard wasn't connected so I wasn't able to use it. Now the final step is to put the iPod mini back together again to functioning order. I did come across one problem where the sticky tape I used, the electric tape, was a bit too thick in my opinion, which prevented me from putting the iPod mini back into the casing, which I thought you know could easily be overcome by the use of excessive force, which was a big mistake. I ended up tearing off 
capacitor 78. Now this capacitor is located near the bottom, near the dock, which caused that white screen flash. And that was the end of it. Wasted all that money, went nowhere, wasted an iPod mini, a compact flash card converter, new battery, and my time. Ah, gotcha. Eh, probably not. After I stopped recording, I ended up plugging the iPod mini back into the computer, and boom, it lit right up, acted normal like nothing has happened. So I think that capacitor may have been related to like a dock type of activity, like a speaker dock or a, like a car dock or something, I don't know. But for me, everything worked. While putting it back together again, I removed the old adhesive, because it's lost its uh, effectiveness. So with my hobby knife, and a pair of scissors, I cut and shaped a replacement out from double sided tape. At this moment, I realized I up and I forgot to screw in the bracket so I ended up having to peel it off again and screw in the missing screws and stick it back on. I did the same thing for the bottom bracket as well. It was slightly more of a pain to get that little piece of metal back in. And now I'm done. A pink iPod mini that has 118 gig of capacity with everything working. The hold button, the little touch wheel, the click wheel, whatever you call it, the iPod wheel. I love how even in the about section it shows up as a 118 gig. Honestly, this project was worth it for me as I can keep my music off my phone just to save my battery life and storage space. While through my iPod mini, I'll be enjoying music at a higher quality. Now for anyone else who's interested in, in completing a project like this with their iPod minis, here are some bit of advice, bit of tips. Take it easy, don't rush the project. If it doesn't slide back in, have a look around. There might be something interfering. Don't waste any time in researching a SD to compact flash card or buying a cheap knockoff off eBay. Just uh, straight up buy the iFlash SD to compact flash adapter and stick to using an SD card that's either or less than 120 gigs. And finally, don't lose the tape that covers the iPod's uh, original hard drive. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, check out my other videos, check out my Patreon. Please, just, just please do it. <laughs>